This is Jim Montague, executive editor of Control Magazine and ControlGlobal.com, and this is the latest in our Control Amplified podcast series. In these recordings, we talk with expert sources about process control and automation topics and try to get beyond our print and online coverage to explore some of the underlying issues impacting users, system integrators, suppliers, and other people and organizations in these industries. For our latest podcast, we're talking to Roberto Benice, Chief Sales and Marketing Officer at Italy-based system integrator Saida, about the impact COVID-19 is having on process industry system integrators and their clients, suppliers, communities, and also the best ways they can all cope with the effects of the worldwide crisis. Uh, located in Songavaso, Bergamo, Saida and its local communities have been devastated by the coronavirus along with the rest of the region. Uh, Saida is also a certified member of the Control System Integrators Association. Uh, well, Roberto, sorry for the lengthy introduction and, and thanks for joining us today. Hello, Jim. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you very much for your time and this opportunity. Okay. Uh, well, well, listen, uh, you know, just to get started, could you please give us some background on uh, Saida and the industries it serves and how you've all been impacted by COVID-19? You know, what's happening right now? Yes, Saida is a control system integrator with more than 30 years of experience in the automation sector. And uh, we are especially focused on the oil and gas, uh, chemical and power market. As you said before, our headquarters is in Italy, at 70 kilometers from uh, Milano. And uh, SAID has more than 35 employees into the main organization function, uh, electrical design team, software development team, production service and the commissioning team. And uh, our business is not only in Italy, but uh, especially abroad, like U.S., uh, Canadian, Asia, Middle East, uh, and uh, Russia country. And uh, about the COVID-19, uh, as you said before, our headquarters is located uh, very close to the epicenter of coronavirus in Italy, more or less 20, 25 kilometers far away. And even if nobody of said employees and their relatives have been affected by COVID, uh, we have been in a very dark period, especially a few weeks ago when the effects of coronavirus were being uh, heavier. But today, the situation is uh, less uh, critical than before. And uh, even if more people are still at home, then they work uh, from uh, their apartment. So, so then just to clarify things, you know, over what timeline did the coronavirus emerge in your area and, and how did you see it affect your people and communities and and businesses and industries? Uh, the first official affected people uh, reached the hospital uh, in the first week of uh, last February, more or less. But probably the coronavirus was uh, here from a long time before. And uh, Jim, as you probably know, the north of Italy is the earth of business in our country. In only Lombardy region, we have more than one sixth of Italy population. And many people travel locally and around the world to have business. Therefore, I think this was the main cause. It has increased dramatically the pandemic effect. And right now in Italy, we have more than 200,000 affected people by COVID and more than 27,000 dead people. Man, holy smokes. Now, as you said, you know, Northern Italy has been one of the regions hardest hit by COVID-19. And, you know, for a while it had the most infections and fatalities. Um, you know, how did you all cope with the initial and the, and the ongoing shock and, and then begin to respond to that? Uh, it was a very surreal situation, very surreal situation. It's, uh, it's very clear in my mind as how I felt the day after the government imposed to close all activities and required to, to people to stay at home. It happened just in a couple of days during the weekend, and uh, we moved to normal life, uh, to a new life, without to understand what was happening. And after a few days, we have started to watch some picture and video, especially on the social network and internet, about overload, hospital, sick people, death, and more. And I remember uh, very clear how many bad calls 
uh, we receive from France and um, in that days, it, it has been very, very sad. So, so did you and your coworkers benefit from uh, local emergency response efforts? I assume that has to be the case. And, you know, did you have a chance to contribute to some of those efforts? Um, I can tell you that the people in this area is very common for their resilience approach and uh, their ability to work and support always everybody, especially during emergency situation. As in the past, uh, uh, every people made themselves available to help uh, older people, doctors, and uh, sick people. And just to give you an example, more than 400 people convert an exhibition area in a hospital just in eight days. And um, as an incoming president of a local Rotary Club, I have the opportunity to see the situation also from a different point of view. And I'm able to confirm that everybody here contributes directly to the emergency situation with any kind of resources. It was very incredible. Now, how is uh, daily life and business being impacted now by COVID-19? As you know, everyone, I assume, is continuing to work from home uh, like yourself. Um, how much continues to be shut down? Yes, um as soon as we understood that the, the dangerous situation, uh, SAID board uh, decided to put in place a very stringent uh, regulation to reduce the access to our offices and premises. And uh, some of our workmates have already been started to work from home before uh, the, co the complete shutdown. And um, to be honest, I think this uh, made the, the difference. And it was the best decision to protect to protect the workmates, their family, their friends, and uh, everybody, and also our business. And uh, even if the government uh, will allow to open the organization on 4th of May, we and more companies around this area will continue to keep the healthy recommendation in our organization. And uh, we are suggesting to our employees to work from their house. And... Um, about the workshop, because we have also the workshop, we implemented all health regulation and we have provided all the health tools to protect the, the workers. Cool. Alrighty. Then, then also, in addition to your own personnel, you know, how have the industries, the process industries that uh, Saida serves been affected? You know, how, how have projects been put on hold? Have some been able to continue? But right now, our business has not been so affected by COVID-19, even if we are encountering some smaller reduction of orders. But uh, as you know, uh, the oil and gas market is under pressure, and we expect to have a, a bad uh, business effect uh, at the end of this year and in 2021. But uh, we have to be positive. And uh, since uh, we know about this likely situation and uh, we have some month before this happened, I think uh, this is the time to renew one of our business model, our products, our relation, and share our working model. Yes, I think. Right. I, I know upstream is, you know, having a very rough time with the low prices, but, but that should benefit the downstream uh, people making products, correct? Ah, yes, correct. Absolutely. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Then, uh, you know, so what kind of remote working tools have, have you been using? Uh, any any kind of new ones? Uh, you know, how have you been using them maybe differently than before? And, you know, which types do you think are the most useful? But I personally think that nobody invented a new tool or instrument right now. But... Uh, we only started to use what it was already available before. For example, I'm thinking about the meeting. Right now, everybody knows how to attend to a web meeting all around the world without to move physically to the place, right? And uh, what uh, concerns our, our organization, our company, we start immediately to improve uh, the internet connection of ability in our headquarters to allow to our workmates to be able to access to server and software. And uh, we also implemented new communication services like Microsoft Teams 
to improve the communication between us and our supply and customers. And uh, the target was uh, clear. Uh, we we wanted to be in complete operation without to to be physically in the office. And uh, today I can tell you that uh, we have redesigned our organ organization. And today SAID is a more flexible, always available, and more competitive than before, just in a few weeks. And uh, uh, please let me to thank you to all uh, SAID employees uh, for their effort and availability. I think uh, we are a, a good team. Cool. Um, you know, probably most importantly, do you, do you guys have any advice, because you're further along the learning curve, uh, do you have any advice for other system integrators and you know, process industry professionals about, you know, how they can cope with COVID-19 and, you know, how to help their communities survive and recover? I think the COVID-19 was being only the trigger to start a new life, a new way to work, to communicate, and to do business. Um, as I said before, we have only started to use tools that were already available on the market before, and today, we have new incredible skills uh, to um, available for the future. And my personal advice for other system integrators, but all for uh, for people, is to never stop to learn new approaches, to reinvent our business, redesign our products, to catch new opportunities, and to start a new life. I think that today, as an ever before, we have to be architects of our future. Cool, man. Well, it's a, it's a really heartfelt message there. Uh, uh, Roberto, that was some great input, and, and uh, I'm just really, truly sorry for everything you and, you know, Saida and your community have had to experience uh, due to the crisis uh, caused by the coronavirus. And hopefully, you know, maybe we can uh, in North America here and elsewhere, take some uh, encouragement and, and use some of your good advice. Uh, thanks again for talking to us today. Thanks. Uh, thanks again for your time, Najin. Thanks. Okay. This has been another uh, Control Amplified podcast. I'm Jim Montague. Thanks for listening. And, uh, you know, always remember that uh, Control Amplified podcasts are available on most podcasting apps, such as the iTunes Store and Google Play and on uh, Control Magazine's YouTube channel podcasts. Uh, plus, you can just always go to controlglobal.com and listen to them right there. All right, thanks for listening, everybody. <laughs>